Good morning, Heritage Academy. Good morning. Our first. Our first song is 305, Give Me Jesus. Song is 432. Shall we gather at the river? Please stand.
Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of Good morning again, Heritage Academy. Uh, I see some empty pews this morning. So if the, if the people watching at home, uh, if, you re if you notice the empty pews as well, we, just, uh, we can let you know that we have the ISEA Music Festival this weekend, and we have like some extra 60 guests uh, that are preparing for the music festival. And we have uh, some of our students as well involved in the, in the rehearsals and the, the music festival as well. So this morning, we're going to watch the last episode of the End Time series. And uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it so far. We have the last episode. We still have uh, Hannah as a staff guest and Lily as a student guest. So let's have a quick prayer and enjoy the video. So thank you, Lord, for bringing us our guests sound, uh, safe and sound. Uh, please make this uh, music festival a blessing for, for everybody that's going to be able to, to listen to it and uh, be a part of the audience. Please make it so that, that, that the rehearsals and everything that they're going to do here in the school is going to run smoothly. And uh, please bless us uh, with uh, the opportunity to have so many guests over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome everyone, my name is Salvador Beltran and today I am so excited to present you guys with the last episode of our series of talk shows which is pretty much, you know, the topic is, is pretty much the end times, right? It's a really broad topic and we have finally come to an end to it, you know? So we have invited the same guests we had last time, you know, we have Miss Hannah and Lily and the first question today guys is going to be, can we know anything about the time of Jesus' return? Mm. You know, can you know what are the signs? Mm -hmm. What do we see in this generation that announces the end of time? Well, we can't know the specific date because Jesus says, you know, that only He and His Father know. Well, actually, only His Father knows the specific date. That even He and the angels don't know the specific date that mm -hmm. He's going to come again. Um, so obviously, you know, when we hear people saying Jesus is coming on November 15, 2021, we know it's not true. Um, but as far as the signs of his coming, there are a lot of signs of his coming in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you guys tell me some of the signs? Yeah. So actually here in Daniel 12, 4, it says, 
But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So we're living in a day and an age where we're learning a lot more about the Bible and about God's teachings than we knew before. Like mm -hmm. we know in 1844, we learned about, you know, Jesus moving from the holy place in the sanctuary to the most holy place and the books were opened, right? Mm -hmm. And he's going through those books now. And in 1888, the whole concept of, you know, righteousness by faith became something that I think is one of our fundamental beliefs. Mm -hmm where we believe that we are saved not by our works, but through the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So knowledge has been steadily increasing, you know, and I feel that as Seventh-day Adventists, we actually, we are given a lot of the light, even that others might not have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pretty much what you're saying is like, knowledge has increased, and that's, mm -hmm. that is a sign that Jesus is coming, yes. right? Like, uh, it, it could also, relate to the knowledge, not only, you know, what are you talking about, but also with like computers and cars mm -hmm. and all this stuff, right? right. Technology in general. Right, right. You know, we didn't have this way back, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, I think it relates to that. Mm -hmm. It relates to technology. Right. Things are moving quicker and quicker. Yeah. And society as a whole is going downhill, you know, in the, in the days of Noah, um, there was, you know, just a lack of, a lack of self-control, a lack of boundaries, a lack of knowing what's appropriate and even following, you know, those things that we almost think of like, well, we wouldn't cross that line, like all lines were gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the Bible it talks about how as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be before Jesus comes. And I think if we look at our world today, there's not really any such thing as morality. Mm -hmm. People, you know, I mean, yes, there is in parts of the world, but in society as a whole, people do what they want. And that's kind of a sign that, that the end is coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, these sound like they're really simple signs, you know. And so let me tell you guys a story, okay? So Captain Scott O'Grady was shot down over Bosnia on the 2nd of June in 1995. He pulled the ejection lever and parachuted mm -hmm. into enemy territory, okay? So for six days, he hid under bushes, mm -hmm. ate bugs, and drank rainwater. To make himself oh less God. visible, he covered his face with mud Sometimes enemy soldiers passed within a few feet of his hiding place, but they never found him. Mm. What O'Grady did not know was that from the moment his ordeal began, intense preparations were made to rescue him. He was wondering, do they know I am alive? Mm. Are they going to come for me? Do they mm -hmm. care? And all the while the United States military was mobilizing to come and get him, they had 40 airplanes in the air mm. looking for him. They were using satellites. They were getting help from other nations. And O'Grady was wondering, will they come for me? Mm. So, you know, our planet has been kidnapped. Mm. And you and I are living in an enemy territory mm. right now. Mm. So some people wonder whether God has forgotten about us. Mm. Don't, don't you believe, you know, that God is with us, you know? Mm. Absolutely. Is God's army making preparations mm. even now to rescue you mm -hmm. and me? He's coming. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure he's coming. Mm -hmm. He's coming soon. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think about this story? I think it's really powerful to think that sometimes we only see the side of the story that we're on. In fact, always. You think about Job. There was so much that happened that he didn't know about in heaven. And it's the same with us. We're like, why hasn't Jesus come already? But there's so much that we don't see. So much that God's doing to try and save everybody, and we don't see that. We don't see the other side. Mm -hmm. And I think even though it was not God's ideal to have us be on this sinful mm -hmm. earth, you know, I think this has been an example of why sin will never happen again. You know, and I think through O'Grady, you know, having this experience and going through that, I think it just gave him a better grasp of how important he was to other people, you know, and how much people wanted him to be saved, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that rescue must have meant a lot to him. And, though, and even though that experience isn't one that I think he wanted to have, I think it was one that taught him a lot about his worth and his value. And I think that that can go the same for us, you know, when Jesus comes back again, that is when we're truly, I feel like, going to realize I have a Father in Heaven mm -hmm. and He has come back to take me from mm -hmm. this sinful world. Mm -hmm. so. so pretty much it's kind of like, 
you know, I finally realized, you know, there's someone that actually loves me, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, okay, so let me ask you this. When do we have to decide to love Jesus? Mm. Like when, like, this is a personal question, okay? Let me just ask you, Miss mm -hmm. Hannah. So when did you start loving Jesus? When did you decide to love him? I think for me it was more serious as I got into my teenage years. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, I, as I was a kid, I kind of did, but you don't really know him that much um, until, you, until you get older. But the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask that is, you know, let's say there's two people in love. They don't sit there and be like, am I going to decide to fall in love today or tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Like, you just fall in love as soon as, as soon as you see how amazing that person is. And I think sometimes we're like, eh, I don't have to decide to love Jesus today because he might not come yet. Is it even love if that's what we want? Like, is it even love if we're like, I'm not going to love him until mm -hmm. I know he's going to come and take me and I don't want to go to hell, so I'm not going to, you know, I, I think if we really see who Jesus is, we start loving him now. It's as soon as we see who he is that we start loving him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, and I think it's truly about that relationship that you build with God. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I was baptized at a pretty young age, around 12, and honestly, looking back, I don't think that that is when I truly started loving mm -hmm. God, when I was baptized. I think it was maybe a couple of years ago, not too long, and I was realizing, you know, that love isn't, in terms of God, it's not necessarily a feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and sometimes I really do feel God's presence, but there are times when I don't, and I have to go by what I know and not by what I feel. Mm -hmm. You know, and so just knowing that God is there and going by His promises, you know, in the Bible, this is God's love letter to us. And so I think I really started loving God, like what Miss Hannah said, when I started to truly know Him and build a relationship with him, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last question. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone was trying to decide whether to love God or not. What would you tell them? Get to know him. You're not gonna know if you love someone until you get to know them. And you know, some people are like, okay, well I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this whole God thing and just see, mm -hmm. do that. If you try it and you decide you don't want anything to do with God, then you have the freedom to make that choice. The likelihood is if you actually know who God is, you'll never make that choice. But mm -hmm. if it's just a step of deciding to get to know Him and then make your decision from there, decide to get to know Him and the love, everything else will follow. Mm -hmm. So what are some ways that they can get to know God? I think a big way of getting to know God is communicating with Him. Mm -hmm. You know, a big part of all of our social relationships is communication. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, through prayer, and prayer doesn't have to be, you know, the formal way of doing it necessarily, you know, in church, kneeling down. It can be, you know, writing, you know, you can write journaling, talking to God, you know, just closing your eyes before you go to bed and just having a conversation with Him. I think just spending that time with Him and making Him a priority in your life will really show you who he is. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, random question, okay? So, you know, we've been talking about science and all this stuff. So, what do Adventists believe about the Antichrist? <laughs> well, we don't have the time to get into all the reasons why we believe um, this. So, I'm kind of going to just give you a summary. And if, you know, mm -hmm. you want to know more about it, then you'll have to study it out. But... Mm -hmm. um, Adventists believe that um, Rome and the papacy and all of that kind of fills that role in a lot of ways. There's a lot of prophetic reasons why we believe that, because I know it sounds kind of crazy and out there to just say that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of reasons in Daniel and Revelation that, that point to that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. So when Jesus comes back, who is going to see him? Is it just going to be, you know, a group of people that is going to see him or like who, who's going to see him? Well, I mean, it says in the Bible, you know, and every eye shall see him. You know, everyone, I think, will, everyone will see him come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just a group. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone, even the wicked, every, mm -hmm. everyone, right? Mm -hmm. So like, I was thinking about this question, you know, the other day. And like, it's just pretty amazing how it says, like, everyone will be able to see him from the west, from the south, from mm -hmm. the, you know, from every single mm -hmm. angle, you know, like how amazing that will be. Mm -hmm. Like I just imagine it like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so beautiful. And I'm really excited to see that. And I would like you, everyone, everyone, you know, to be able to participate mm -hmm. in that experience and 
being able to have a good experience and not a bad experience, you know, being, you know, um, condemned. Mm. So, yeah, this is the end, guys. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. one Thank more you time. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a great blessing for families out there, you know, and the internet, on the internet, sorry. I'm still learning English, you know. You're good. <laughs> but You're doing yeah, great. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching, for your support, for your love. And, you know, just make sure, you know, you share these videos, you know, to people. And, you know, just pray for us also, you know, because we really need to keep going with this series of talk shows. And hopefully by next week we have another video uh, and we're going to choose another topic. And I hope you guys will like it. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please, if you have any more questions, leave them down below in the comments. And yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, so that was the, the end of our first series. Tomorrow we're going to have the opportunity to see just the first episode of the second series. We're going to talk about... Uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, prayer tomorrow, another interesting topic. And we're going to have uh, two other guests uh, on the show. So, like I said yesterday, since we're a little bit early, uh, I encourage you guys to encourage us by telling telling the, the team that you liked it. Or criticism is, is good as well, it's constructive. So if you, th if you think that we did something wrong, just come and tell us. Also, if you want to volunteer to be on the show, we, we need students and we need staff as well that we can have a conversation about an interesting topic of the Bible. Okay, so let's have a quick prayer so you guys can enjoy breakfast. Thank you, God, to give, to give us the opportunity to meet here this morning again. We thank you for the the blessings that we had doing these videos for you, and we hope that we're going to be a blessing through them, through uh, to our audience and other people. Uh, we're just trying to spread your word, God, and and we're trying to do the best we can. Please be with our students and our guests for the rest of the day, and. Uh, Make us uh, carry the message of the end times with us everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.